offices, and it had been happening for years when you're talking about defensive tackles versus defensive ends. I remember 10, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, having this discussion with Jerry Gray, you know, the former great uh, Texas alum, who said that, look, he would value an inside pass rusher even over an edge rusher because of the fact that all quarterbacks hate interior pressure. That's why you're seeing guards getting paid the way they're getting paid now. Yeah. Right? Because and think about some of the ways like the, old, the New Orleans Saints of old when Drew Brees was really starting to hit his stride, when they paid Jari Evans and Carl Nix, and they were two of the highest paid offensive linemen in the NFL. And then they went a little bit more, I don't want to say bargain basement, but a little more value-oriented at tackle. The interior of your offensive line, the interior of your defensive line is a premium. Max needed it for sure because he needed quarterbacks to stop being able to step up. So he can, so, and so now he can come off of that edge with the quarterback sitting at nine yards instead of six yards, and it's going to really fortify the interior of the run defense, which is really probably Christian's greatest strength. The Las Vegas Raiders, Antonio Pierce and Tom Telesco, have done such a good job so far this offseason, bringing in new talent, but also not going overboard and signing these, you know, mid-tier free agents for massive contracts. They do bring in one of the best, if not the best, free agent on the market in Christian Wilkins. We'll talk about all that in a minute. They also bring in a new backup quarterback in Gardner Minshew, Harrison Bryan, a backup tight end, and a backup running back in Alexander Madison after losing Josh um, Jacobs, right? Now, in this video, we're going to break down everything you need to know about what the blueprint is for this Raiders team. And then lastly, Tom Telesco, the new Raiders GM, just came out with an interview where he kind of breaks down each of the signings and why they actually helped the Raiders going forward. So we're going to listen to a little bit of that. Before we get into the video, though, make sure you guys do me a favor and comment down a letter grade down below for Tom Telesco in their offseason here, what they've done. You know, they brought in some nice talent, some nice veteran leadership, and also some depth as well. Comment down below a letter grade, subscribe if you're new, and let's jump right into this video. Now, the first guy I want to talk about here is Alexander Madison. This man is actually a pretty good running back coming off a really bad season in Minnesota, but is one of the main reasons why the Raiders got him for relatively cheap. Now, I want to kind of slow down the film just for a second here, but this is a guy that the Raiders are bringing in, losing Josh Jacobs, who can do it all. He can catch a football at the backfield, he can make guys miss the open field, and he runs hard. That is the true definition of a Raider, a guy that will do whatever it takes to continue to turn those feet and make big plays as a running back. Now, we talk about a guy like Zamir White, who is absolutely massive. The man is going to get a lot of work this season, and I think he can really handle it. But when you look at his Alexander Madison, not only does he add you some veteran leadership, he also adds you a guy off the bench who can really run the football and really do it at a high level. Now, again, last season wasn't what everyone was expecting after getting rid of Dalvin Cook. They thought he was going to be, you know, a little bit more you know, relevant, right? Had a bad year, but that's okay. Kirk Cousins went down. What were they supposed to do, right? But what I love about Alexander Madison, he brings versatility, okay? Now, what I mean by that is literally what you just saw. He can catch the football. So one, it allows you to be unpredictable, right? Unpredictable unpredictability in the NFL is super important. You cannot allow teams to know, like, um, you know, for example, last season with the, the Green Bay Packers, right? When A.J. Dillon was in the game, they weren't going to throw him the football. Uh, when Aaron Jones in the game, they were probably going to throw him the football, right? I mean, so you don't want that unpredictability. Alexander Madison is a guy who can do it both and can do it very well. Zamir White, him, and a couple of other guys are going to get a lot of work in this offense. I'm excited to see how they work out together. Now, before we get into Christian Wilkins, which is huge by the way i'm so excited to talk about christian wilkins and what he's gonna add let's listen to what tom telesco actually said about this signing specifically yeah you know he's a pretty well-rounded player i mean he's 220 pounds um he runs physical and hard he runs like a little bit of a violent style to him um he's running the scheme that we're gonna run he, he ran this very similar first couple years of minnesota so he has some familiarity with that um, and he can catch the ball out of the backfield, which you have to do. This is, this is a passing league. You've got to be able to get out and catch the ball in space. Um, he's still a pretty good athlete despite, you know, his size. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a committee of three or four backs. You know, he'll be one of those kind of competing for carries. Uh, but he's always flashed there. Um, you know, we, the last team I was with, we played against him. He had over 100 yards, all-purpose yards. I think he had a good game against the Raiders as well last year. 
That is interesting. Right away, you didn't say a committee of two backs, three or four backs. When you look at the Raiders running back room, you have Zamir White, you have Alexander Madison, you have Amir Abdullah, who they did re-sign this offseason. I think he is actually really underrated as running back. But who do you think that fourth running back is? A, a Sincere McCormick, a Tyreek McAllister, a Bertain Brown, or do they add someone in the draft? I think it's going to be very interesting. But with that being said, let's jump into what Christian Wilkins adds to this team, man. This is the one... Wow, I am pumped about what him and Max are going to do. Let's talk about it. Now, real quickly, before we dive into my opinion, my analysis on Christian Wilkins coming to the Raiders, I want to show you a little interview he did, or at least a little segment that he did, talking about what he's going to add to this team alongside Max Crosby and why he loves the addition of himself here in, Ra in Las Vegas for the Raiders, right? Before we do that, though, make sure you guys do me a big favor. Subscribe if you're new. It is free. It doesn't cost anything to join the family. And we're going to be posting Raiders videos for the entirety of the offseason, uh, training camp, mini camp, draft, whatever it is, I got you covered with everything you need to know. Also, hit the like button. If this video gets up to 400 likes, we'll be dropping a part two of the breakdown. So make sure you guys join the family and let's get into this interview real quick. And I'm, I'm really excited for that just because, again, like Max, Max probably my, my favorite my favorite player in the league. And I'm not just saying that because I'm here now, but I've always felt that way. Again, he just does everything the right way. He handles his business. He plays with a motor, plays with passion. And you just see that and it's clear. And I think that's why he's so well respected around the league is just because, you know, he just does it all the time consistently nonstop and how can you not want to play with a guy like that and you know and then there's other guys on the D-line too you know that um, you know and just on the defense as well that you know you want to play with too you know what I mean just because they're they're gritty they're they're tough they're nasty there's some dogs in there and you know I just want to be able to like I said add to it in any way I can. Now, in that interview, we actually heard a lot more out of Christian Wilkins, right? And one thing that really caught my eye was the fact that he cannot wait to help mentor Tyree Wilson. Guys, that is massive news in itself. But let's look at some of the stats over the last five seasons. Been relatively healthy. Hey, knock on wood, like we're going to see in a second. Tom Telesco mentions it. Very reliable in playing games. We're going to need him to stay healthy, so knock on some wood. But with that being said, 355 tackles. 20 and a half sacks as an interior defensive lineman is absolutely insane. Nine sacks list last season kind of broke out, right? Forced fumble, two fumble recoveries. But this is the number I want you to see. The 17 and a half run stuffs from 2022, the 14 and a half run stuffs from 2021. Not only can this guy get to the quarterback, but he can also stuff the run as well, right? And we talk about looking at this defensive line. Max Crosby is insane, right? Coming off a massive season. Wilkins is another pass rusher that can stuff the run and do everything that you need as well as bring the intensity, bring the leadership, and bring some dogness to the locker room. And then you re-sign a guy like Adam Butler, who I like. I think Byron Young, a former third-round pick of last season, can absolutely learn from Christian Wilkins. And I like John Jenkins as well well right I think they spent time together in Miami and then you talk about Malcolm Koontz who had a breakout year or a breakout end of the season last year Tyree Wilson the first round pick dude this D line is absolutely deep they're stacked and they're only going to get better because the leadership the prowess the tenacity the dogness of Christian Wilkins and what he's going to bring now real quickly let's talk about what or not talk about but listen to what Tom Telesco said about this addition and why it helps him so much next season I saw Christian as a really unique opportunity because players like him usually don't become available in free agency as far as a player um, in the prime of his career um, has been healthy and durable throughout his career which we're going to hopefully continue that's continue to happen um, and uh, great makeup and character, and really has played at a high level for, for four years. It wasn't, this wasn't like a one-year uh, you know, contract guy. So, and he plays a position that's a premier position. It's hard to find. It's hard to find big people who have really great movement skills, explosiveness, can play the run in the pass. And um, what we've seen, now, if you want to win your division, in any division, um, you need to have a deep and talented defensive line. Now, I think the addition of Gardner Minshew is very intriguing to me. Obviously, the quarterback market, they were, they're were flying off. Russell Wilson signed a crazy deal with the Pittsburgh Steelers. We saw Justin Fields get traded for a bag of chips. Um, what else? We saw Jacob Brissett go to the Patriots, right? There's some other guys that land in other, other spots. Gardner Minshew is on the younger side, right? Um, he is talented in terms of the man has started random games like has been a backup and then had to start some games has always looked relatively good right which is something that makes me excited 
Now, I don't think he's the day one starter. I think the Raiders are fully invested in Aiden O'Connell, or at least want to see what he can do. I also believe that in the NFL, and Tom Tedesco is going to touch on this as well, that you need quarterbacks, right? There's injuries, people go down, people miss games. If you don't have a backup quarterback, you're going to lose all those games. Gardner Minshew is not only a guy who can come in, step in, and be a spot starter for one to five games if you need him to be, but also a guy who could be the starter, the full-time starter, and lead you to some football games, if not only, or at least, keep you competitive. Now, Gardner Minshew's a dog. I think he's a dog. The way he plays is is dog related right and the Raiders are looking for dogs okay um you can just tell the way he plays football unbelievable catch by the way um you can just tell the man comes off the bench and is always ready always prepared to go to war with his guys right also Gardner Minshew you know you talk about guys who like to play football and guys who like to make money Gardner Minshew loves to play football you see him taking these one-year deals two-year deals here and there right but he doesn't care about the money. He cares about winning football games. He cares about making a difference on a on a team. And quite frankly, he makes a big difference here. I know a lot of guys, uh, a lot of fans don't love Gardner Minshew and what he stands for. But I do. I think he could be a dog. I think he's someone that can, you know, lead your football team. I think he can be a leader. I think he can make the right throws, make smart decisions, and lead your football team down the field when you need him to the most. And at the end of the day, you aren't going to find anyone better than Gardner Minshew at his age, at his position, in free agency outside of maybe Justin Fields. I do think Justin Fields would have been a good addition, but I don't think Justin Fields, um, you know, would be okay with being a backup to Aiden O'Connell, right? But I still think they should try to go, go out and get Jaden Daniels. I don't know how possible that is, but if it is, I think Jaden Daniels would be massive for the Raiders. How many quarterbacks went down with injuries? And it kind of just reminds you, like, you need more than one quarterback. You need at least two. Um, so, and I think a lot of teams see the same thing as far as investing in, in this position, um, not just with your starter. So a chance to, to add Gardner to the mix, have him come in and compete with Aiden. Um, Gardner, when he's ever, he's had the chance to play, he's gone in and produced. Um, he had plays with a certain moxie to him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's certainly a guy when you watch play, like he just, to me, just screams Raider. Yeah. As far as how he plays, how he plays the game, his passion for it. Um, but uh, we're excited to have Adam in the room. I think it'll even help Aiden because, because you know, Gardner's been around a little bit, plays some different offenses, a little bit more of a veteran presence. So we're excited to have him. And the last move the Raiders made was signing Harrison Bryant, a backup tight end to, you know, just replace Austin Hooper, right? Austin Hooper's okay. I think he ended up with the New England Patriots. But now you have a backup tight end, a guy who can pass block, a guy who can run block, and, you know, a guy who can catch some passes as well and make some guys miss in the open field with his power, with his strength, right? I, I don't mind Harrison Bryant at all. I think he's a solid player. Um, he's never going to give you those wow years. He's not going to put up five, 700 yards or eight touchdowns. But he's very consistent in the red zone. Three touchdowns, three touchdowns, three touchdowns as a backup tight end in every single season besides one, I think is actually really, really good. And, um, you know, this past season, they had David Njoku, they had Jordan Akin. So playing as that number three tight end, still producing three touchdowns is really good. I think this is a guy who is underrated and a guy who will come in and be a day one contributor to this offense. Now, when you look at the team overall, last season, the defense was nasty. The defense was there, right? The offense could not score points to save their lives. Actually, they, they averaged 90. 19.5 points a game and allowed 19.5 points a game right um, but obviously you needed to see a, you know some improvement in the running game uh, they brought back Andre James you need some more development Colton Mill will be back as well so that will be huge uh, but obviously the offense is where this team needed to get better they bring in a tight end they bring in a backup running back they bring in a new a backup quarterback here um, and I think they really 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 got to solidify the uh, offensive line room there needs to be more talent I think they're going to go on the draft and bring in some more guys as well as maybe another wide receiver two three wide receivers uh, whether it's in free agency or uh, undrafted free agency as well I think there's a lot of guys a lot of moves they can make but with the team right now I think the D-line is stacked I love Max I love Christian Wilkins I loved um, you know Malcolm Kuntz Tyree Wilson Adam Butler I love Byron Young I love the front seven or, or front th four I should say with the depth uh, uh, linebacker room I think Robert Spillane is as good as anyone I, I, th I think what he showed last season is dog okay dog Amari, uh, Amari Bernie I think is quick good speed uh, as a linebacker maybe can develop I know they'd like Devon Diablo a lot I think he's a good player and then the DB room I'm actually really high on man I think Jack Jones is a dog he played or tried to play with uh, you know Antonio Pierce at Arizona State then you have Trayvon Murray, the former second round pick Marcus Epps who they brought in last season Nate Hobbs 
Um, you know, and then I think they need to add some more depth here along the secondary. I like Jacory and Bennett a little bit. I like Brendan face on if he can stay healthy. Uh, but other than that, I think there are a lot of areas that they can improve on. But right now, I love what they're doing. I, I love that they're not going out there and just wasting money on low key or, or like mid tier free agents and spending a lot of money on them. I like what they're doing. Stay low key, get the guys you really want. Other than that, save your cap space. Let's load up again next season and bring another big fish free agent like a Christian Wilkins. Make it even better, man. I think quarterback is a very interesting spot for us. Do you go and draft one? Um, maybe. Does one fall to you? Maybe. Do you, do you, uh, you know, force your pick and just take a Michael Penix at 11 or whatever it may be? No, I don't think you should do that. Um, but there's a lot of talent. We're going to start talking about the draft a little bit more in the next couple of videos for the Raiders. So make sure you guys stay tuned. Hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next Raiders update. Hopefully it's soon. Peace.